Okay, so now, again, today what we're going to go through is uh, how to advance from one level to the next. In our game, it's going to generally be based on whether we eliminate all of the bombs or not. So, for our bombs, um, basically what happens is when we click on one, it's destroyed, it goes away. We're not dealing with points yet, so the most important thing here is just that all the bombs are gone in order to move to the next level. So in order to bother moving to the next level, it would be helpful to have a next level. Okay? So I'm going to call this room level 2, and I'll just give it a caption of level 2. Now, basically, oh, that's still level 1, that's not good. Room level 2, we'll make it 32 by 32. I there's so many different ways you could go with this. One thought I had for what could make this a little more interesting is that perhaps each level it feels like the walls are closing in on us and it gets a little smaller. Okay, that's one option for what might make this game better or different or harder, whatever. Now I'm going to put some bombs in here. Okay? And I'm going to, whoops, put my basketball in there. And at this point, the game is, like the bombs would be the same speed, which is fine because the room's smaller, so it should be a little more difficult, et cetera, until we get to a really small level. That's one way to do it. You could consider that on each level your bombs might get faster. However, then you would actually need a new object for your second bomb because the first bomb is set to only go at a certain speed. We would make a duplicate of that. Bomb two might go faster. Those are things we'll cover at another time, but that is an option for sure. So in this case, I have room one, room two, and let's just go a step further. And actually, let's even duplicate this room. And just so you see how great it is when you duplicate something, room level three, level three, now, I already have all this. I don't have to draw this on again, but of course, to stay tried and true, I have to do this for level three. It's getting scary already. Okay? So now I have three levels. I think it's a pretty good concept for a game. Pretty simple. You know, we'll see how far you go. Then maybe in a game like this, if you're going to have many, many levels, maybe after you get a certain point, that's when you decide, okay, let's change it. Let's go back to a different looking room, but now maybe make the bombs faster, so it's a different experience, whatever. So we've got this so far. So now, the best time to check if we no longer have any bombs in the room is after we click one and it disappears, right? Because if I have ten bombs, I click one, I now have nine, I check, are there zero bombs? No, so I keep playing, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I click the last bomb, it checks, do I have zero bombs? The answer is yes, it does something, okay? So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to go to under control. That's where a lot of questions and variable type things come into play. And I'm going to use another type of conditional statement like we did the other day with the if then. Um, this one, what it's going to do though, is it's going to check the instance count. So I'm checking to see if the bombs equal zero. If the bombs equal zero, then I want to go to the next room, okay? There are a lot of things you might want to consider, like one of these options is, um, there's somewhere where it's if the next room exists, so check the next room. Maybe we'll go that route for now. So I'm going to check if the next room exists, then go to the next room. Okay, so if the next room exists, go to it. If not, maybe you give a message like, congratulations, you win. Okay? And um, after that, maybe you you know, just end the game or what have you, okay? But that's all only if the next room doesn't exist. So let's see if this works. 
Okay. So I'm in level one. I click, click. Oh, oh. Oh, oh boy. Well, that's actually a good thing because we want to see if the lives stay as two, which they do. Okay, did it work so far? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, oh boy. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That brings up a very interesting point. That's about the only time we could get this glitch. Why was there an error right, or not an error, but what just happened? That's probably the worst thing that could happen in this case. Yeah, the basketball destroyed the last bomb. So we should really take it account for that. Like, in other words, if I had zero lives, it would have told me game over. In this case, I still have one life. So you might want to check for the basketball when it destroys the instance of, well, this is when the bomb collides with the basketball, it destroys that. You might need to do the whole same thing we just did. When it destroys it, we check the instance count again of the bomb. And just like we did before, if that bomb, if there are no more bombs, then we want to go to the whole thing with the, if the next room exists, then we go to the next room. Uh, and if it doesn't exist, we still say, even though the basketball lost one more life, you didn't die. So what would it do? It would then restart the game, or no, I mean end the game. And, or before that it would probably say a message like, you win. Now, um, hopefully, the only thing that concerns me here is that I do hope that, you know, I, I'd probably want to move all this up to, uh, let's say, here. And it's more important to me first, if I lost the last life, I should die before I figure out if I've won. Although, it's a little sketchy there. It could, either one could be okay. If I die on the last one, but it ends the game, maybe it's okay to win. So anyway, that's the general idea of testing the instance count to see if we've got rid of something and are ready to move on to the next level. There are other ways to deal with um, moving to the next level, if you like, and you can be creative in that. But this is how you would do it if you want to do it based on removing all the bombs.